Let's welcome in Steve Roberts. He is the president of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good morning, Rob. I'm well. Thank you for having me on. Nice to hear from everybody. It is great to have you with us, Steve. I always enjoy our conversations. You know a lot about Thank the you. state and the state's economy, so I always enjoy hearing your uh, inside information on this stuff. This, uh, from a Chamber of Commerce perspective, was a pretty productive 60-day session, wouldn't you say? You know, this has been a good session. Look, if you're a West Virginian who's interested in tax cuts, uh, better support for teachers in our schools, uh, improving our taxing processes, uh, having a more competitive public uh, state employees insurance uh, health system, uh, if you're for increased support for higher education, uh, if you like the idea of some additional school choice, if, uh, then you would look at this session and say, gosh, something got done on all of those fronts in this session. And that is why West Virginia continues to make progress and continues p to position itself to be competitive with our surrounding states. And, you know, we have a goal here at the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce to identify those things that really matter and then try to get West Virginia into the top ten uh, among all the states in all those subjects where things really matter. So that would mean top ten in lowest taxes. Uh, just as one example, we'd like to see us have a goal for moving into the top 10 for the kind of education that we provide for our children. Um, and I think those are things all West Virginians can sort of get their minds around and say, yes, I'd be for that. Now, how do we get there? So um, those are the things we are continuing to work on, and we applaud the legislative leadership for uh, helping take us in that direction. Steve, has West Virginia moved up on some of these top 50, uh, maybe you include D.C., ranking charts in terms of economy, uh, future prospects, income, that sort of thing? Yes, we are seeing uh, growth, and, and we're seeing movement, and much of it is in a positive direction. Now, there are always going to be hiccups and blips and, and things like that when you're an energy-producing state, and West Virginia is the fifth largest energy-producing state in the nation, and energy markets are cyclical. That's going to cause blips in, um, in your uh line of progress. But on the whole, we are seeing West Virginia, we've got a much, as a good example, we've got a much more competitive tax system now. And uh, if we continue to see this kind of progress, we'll be able to continue tweaking our tax system so that we can move up to even better rankings. But most national studies say that West Virginia is in approximately the mid, uh, the middle of states, and I agree with you. We'd include the, uh, the uh, we'd we'd include the District of Columbia. Uh, West Virginia is mostly in the middle. We've we've in some cases we've moved into at least the top 20. Uh, the top 20 is a, a good start. But once you're in the top 20, you ought to start thinking about being in the top 10. And uh, I think in West Virginia, we need sort of a cultural realignment. We need to start thinking about ourselves as winners. Um, and what do winners do? Winners compete. Winners uh, want to stay well-ranked. And, and it's our hope that we as a state will start thinking more in that direction. Steve, uh, more companies continue to move into West Virginia, larger corporations, some game changers. I know you are involved in these talks, and at the least toward the end, I know you're involved in discussions that determine why these uh, corporations move into West Virginia. What can you tell us about this recent group that has moved here in terms of their you know, motivation for moving, and what was the thing we, that sealed the deal? We, First, let's just go back to your point. These are blue ribbon companies. These are the names that everybody uh, is chasing. Every state in the nation would like to have these companies coming to their state. So that's a real good thing. And um, let's go back to 2015 when the legislature took a close and tough vote on right to work and made West Virginia a right to work state. Frankly, that got us on the map. Uh, the development director at that time said, and this is, I'm talking about the state development director at that time, said 
this is what is needed to get West Virginia on the map to be looked at. I think we can look backwards um, and say seven and a half years later, yep, uh, that's correct. We've had companies that have told us that. Um, we've also um, tried to adopt a more competitive tax system. We still have some problems in that area, but we've uh, tried to adopt uh, a more competitive tax system. And for very small businesses, thanks to the work of the legislature, we have adopted a more competitive uh, tax system. We've Again, we've got more work to do there. Um, they're also telling us that the abundance of energy really makes a difference when they know they can come to a place that can give them all the electricity they want reliably and at lower rates than the national average. That is a big help. Um, many of the companies are very, very complimentary of our West Virginia workforce. West Virginia workers have a reputation for giving you a full day's work for a full day's pay, and they also have a reputation for being very loyal. And in a time when it's hard to get employees and training costs are high, knowing that when somebody comes to work for you, that they just have a cultural ethic that, that this is my company and I'm going to be loyal to them and I'll stay there with them, that makes a big difference for these companies. So those are just some of the things. Um, we've, we've also had some companies that have told us that our uh, regulatory permitting process um, works on an expedited basis and gets things moving more quickly than it perhaps did at one time. So we think we've had improvement in that area too. Uh, all of these are good things. We do need, let me just throw in so that it's not all uh, uh, one-sided, let me just throw in that we do have still a workforce problem. Uh, we have a lot of workers who are reaching retirement age. The companies are thinking about where they're going to go to get a workforce, the workforce of the future. This is something that we think a lot about. We're working with higher education with our community and technical colleges and with our public school system to try to make sure that we're all really thinking about how we get our young people in the right um, kinds of fields so that they can come out of school, whatever school they're coming out of, and be ready to enter the workforce and have a good job waiting for them. Matt Miller. As far as those jobs, Steve, how much can they help to attract people as we talk about bringing people into the Mountain State and growing our population, knowing that there are those types of jobs available? Is that a help in seeing people come to the state? Matt, I think you've hit on something very important, and something that we are working on here at the Chamber is to try to identify where those jobs are and in what fields they exist. Um, because, frankly, we think there's a mismatch. Um, and the mismatch is that we may have, and I'm just going to I'm, I'm just going to um, use an example here. We might have a lot of unemployed people in the West Virginia coal fields, but we might have a lot of jobs in, say, the Eastern Panhandle, as an obvious example. So we've got to we've got to help people understand where the openings are, um, what it takes to get in line for those jobs, and how you would go about getting one of those jobs. Um, we do know, and I think you probably experienced this in the Eastern Panhandle, people like coming to West Virginia because our residential property taxes are much, much lower than surrounding states. And typically, our, our housing costs are much lower. So um, we've, we've got things to offer. We've, we want to make sure we are offering the very best public education we can. Um, we look forward to working with all the stakeholders, parents, uh, teachers, administrators, potential employers, taxpayers, everybody, you know, everybody really is a stakeholder when it comes to the output of our public school system. And we want to make sure that our teachers have every opportunity to grow and and stay motivated to do the very best job they can do. Most people who go into teaching are really called to it and love the field. But are we giving them the tools we need? Um, and if, if not, how can we? 
and how can we make sure that our school children are doing just as well as everybody else's school children and can, can do as well on standardized tests and so forth so that they can compete um, with everybody else who's getting a good education in this country. So there's a whole gamut of things that, that really go into helping to attract that person, not just the job, but uh, a lot of those other elements. How are we doing as a state in being able, do you feel, you know, to, to bring those up to a level that becomes very attractive? So we want to keep talking about quality of life and the importance of diversity. Uh, the states that are really growing and really seeing their economies grow are emphasizing quality of life. That means good health care. Uh, to many people, I would say that means good health care, uh, the availability for good health care, good education and good schools. It means parks and recreation. Um, it means uh, having uh, a clean and protected environment that both allows industry to flourish and also uh, uh, allows uh, and creates the pristine waters that we have so much of uh, here in West Virginia. And, and so we think we have to be focused on all of those things. We also want to, to go out of our way to say West Virginia um, wants to be an open and welcoming state. Statistically, um, we are very close to last in the nation for having an immigrant population. That's just one example of being a diverse and inclusive state. So we want to make sure that people who are talented, who may be coming to this country from other places, uh, would would want to choose West Virginia. You know, if you're a very good doctor and you've escaped from a a place where things are collapsing, like Afghanistan, or or perhaps um, you've managed to get out of Russia or China, well, you might be very, very talented, and you might be able to heal someone's sick child here in West Virginia. We want to make sure that you feel like you want to come here, that this would be a good place for you to put down roots and make a life for yourself. So we're talking about those kinds of things, too. John Bugwell. I... Uh... I want to talk, Steve, a little bit about the frontier expansion, the communications, the fiber optics, stuff like that, that they're going to do, sure. I mean, across our state, which, I mean, I think will be a huge boon. Have you seen uh, major companies showing more interest in relocating to West Virginia, especially toward the middle of the state, with this prospect of having what they would need technology-wise? You know, um, you've hit upon a good point because the companies really have to be communicating in a 21st century way. And fortunately, we've seen massive expansion of, uh, of our high-speed Internet in West Virginia. Uh, it's being approached from more than one direction. And um, three to five years ago, this was something that was uh, uh, considered a real challenge for us in West Virginia, but we've made enough progress and are going in the right direction that the companies have a lot of confidence that um, we are either there or we have plans to get there in terms of having um, access to uh, uh, fiber optic networks and uh, high-speed internet. So uh, we've made progress, we are making progress, and we have a plan uh, to keep going that gives potential employers a lot of confidence that we're heading in the right direction on this. Because we end up with and, a lot... Oh, yeah, go on, sorry, I'm sorry. Go, ahead. go on, Steve, I'm sorry. Well, I, I was simply going to say, and, and, and maybe five years ago or so, that I wouldn't have been able to say that. We were really sort of um, stuck. Maybe we were uh, in neutral. We weren't making progress fast enough. But um, uh, the things that have happened in the last three to five years, I give a lot of credit to uh, Roger Hanshaw and to Craig Blair, our legislative leaders, for really making this a priority and uh, keeping uh, their their foot hard on the pedal to make sure that we're heading in the right direction on this. They've had to fend off some legislative attempts to kind of undo the progress we're making. And, you know, there's a lot of money to be made in this, and so you get those who come up with some harebrained scheme, and, and you get to the bottom of it, and you find that what's really happening is they have a plan that somebody of theirs is going to make money on this. Well, our legislative leaders have fought off those kinds of attempts 
and have really kept us going in the right direction. And that has given the companies a lot of confidence that things are things are either better or getting better quickly. Well, and, and also, I mean, in addition to that, we were talking about, you know, adding to our population, bringing people into the state. I mean, I know people that have moved 10 minutes out of Martinsburg, and then they realize, wait a second, I have no internet. I have no high-speed yeah. internet. I mean, yeah. we're, people are sort of, in West Virginia, a lot of times you're sort of stuck in the, the population centers, which are, I mean, not gigantic as they are in other states. But once you go into a little more rural area, everybody needs a good internet connection these days. And I'm sh- there are a lot of people who don't move outside of cities, outside of towns here, because you can't get a connection. I mean, I, I think that I think overall business, personally, everything. I think this the fiber optic expansion in West Virginia is hopefully going to be a boon to our population. We we completely agree. Connectivity is just something that so many people take for granted in the 21st century, and we have to have uh, we have to continue to. Um, make sure that connectivity is one of our highest priorities. What what I'm really saying is that we've been making progress, and the progress that we've been making has given um, a a real shot of confidence to uh, particularly, I think, employers who are able to um, uh, go where they want to go in West Virginia for the most part. There There are still a few exceptions. But for the most part, the employers feel pretty good about where they go in West Virginia and the level of connectivity that they can achieve uh, for where they go. Steve, this conversation kind of began with the the talk of the Blue Ribbon companies and seeing those types of companies moving in to the Mountain State. How do you feel that we are doing right now in being able to help and support the small businesses within our Mountain State that are are so vital to our communities and the establishment of, of new businesses as entrepreneurs look at these opportunities and say, hey, I would like to start something right here where I live? Well, and and small businesses are so important to the economic health of our state because um, it's so much of our state's um, employment uh, goes to small businesses, and we know nationwide that the there is huge economic vitality uh, in the small business sector. So the legislature passed a bill, um, actually passed more than one bill. Uh, in the last session related to how small businesses are taxed. That will help uh, our small businesses. It, it's not only a tangible um, improvement in uh, the tax process for small business, but it also sends the right signal that instead of trying to take, we're, try- we're more interested in what we can give than, than what we can get. Um, and I want to compliment our banks. We have a very uh, we have very very good bankers uh, throughout West Virginia. Again, I think this goes to loyalty and duration. We have we have very experienced bankers who um, know what they're doing and are very community uh, oriented. And um, small business has access in West Virginia to fantastic banking services. That's a very good thing. Um, so we're seeing, um, and interestingly, within the membership of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce, almost 90% of our membership, and we have a very broad membership, members throughout the state, members who employ over half of West Virginia's workforce, nearly 90% of our members are small businesses. And um, so the small businesses are very, very important to us. And um, we, what we're finding is a number of very happy small businesses. We're having a, um, a program coming up uh, later this week to explain some of the tax changes that are particularly helpful to the smaller businesses. Um, and we're finding huge interest in that program by itself. So that we call these Business Academy. And anybody can go on our website, wvchamber.com, and see where the Business Academy, it's a virtual academy, it's open to all, and um, uh, so um, we're finding that in particular, small business is very interested in these academies because there's so much information about the things we're doing and changing in West Virginia to make ourselves more competitive, more friendly to employers, 
And those things will draw people into our state. We certainly agree. We want to see our population uh, not decline but grow. And for the most part, people can't go where they can't work. Um, So we've got to make sure that we have employment opportunities. Even retired people want to go where there are employment opportunities in case they want to reenter the workforce. Or maybe their children come to visit and say, hey, we love it here. Can we get a job here? So we've got to have those opportunities for employment. And uh, we, we see progress being made on that front. Steve, do you have time for one more question? I absolutely do. Thank you for your time. Oh, that's great. Hey, my question is, since we're post-COVID now, are we seeing a big uptick in startups, in startups of small businesses here in West Virginia? We have. It's that, it's very interesting. We have um, uh, what I would describe as clusters of entrepreneurs. There are clusters of entrepreneurs in north central West Virginia, a number connected to the great work of West Virginia University. We have clusters of entrepreneurs in um, in your area. We have clusters of Parker of, um, of entrepreneurs in the Mid Ohio Valley near Parkersburg. We have clusters of entrepreneurs in the I-64 corridor that connects Huntington and Putnam County and and uh, Charleston, and those um, often they are young, not always, but often they are young. They are so enthusiastic. They are blossoming in so many ways. Let me give you just one example, and I'm going to call out a person by name. Paul Smith has opened nearly half a dozen successful restaurants. Uh, People from our office met with Paul yesterday. Uh, I spent a lot of time talking to him. He is one of five nominees nationally for the James Beard Award, which is the Academy Award of Chefs. So we have um, a young entrepreneur right here in West Virginia who is one of five um, national nominees. They'll be they go to Chicago in May, where they will be where the winner will be selected. But we've got one of those people from West Virginia, and um, and we've got another that may be up and coming and right behind him. So um, when I say we want to be in the top ten, this guy is in the top five. Um, and um, he is a budding, young, thriving entrepreneur right here in West Virginia who is happy to share his story and his talents with anybody who wants to learn from him. So th- there is uh, just uh, one <laughs> real-life um, example of how we're doing it and somebody who is doing it. And by the way, when you were talking about Brenton Doyle, now you've got me getting ready to go take a look at Brenton Doyle and the Rockies and <laughs> to see if we've got a budding West Virginia sports star out there that we can start talking about. I, I, I communicated with a guy who's on the national stage uh, day before yesterday. His name's Matt Lewis. He's a graduate of uh, Shepherd University, mm-hmm. um, and he is a, he's a big deal in the D.C. political world. Um, and so there's another that I would put among the, the real pantheon of – um, national voices that were educated right here in West Virginia. Steve, you tell a great story. It is uh, always a pleasure to have you on the program, and I think you always make people feel better uh, about the state whenever you're on the program. Well, thanks so much for having me and for giving me so much time and for asking such great questions. And let's all remember, we can do this. We are doing it. We are seeing the signs that things are happening, and and we should be very optimistic about our future. We're fortunate to live in this great country, and then we're plopped down um, in just such a beautiful place that has so much to offer. Well, I think that uh, people can't help but feel positive because you send out those kind of vibes. Thanks, man. Thanks so much. Appreciate you having me on.